you turn it on? No? Go check it again, please. Okay, go check it again. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I tell you what, with a bell ringing like that, I think maybe we should wait a few minutes and see if some more people from town come, <laughs> come and join us. That was really good, Leo. Must be in baseball season. <laughs> church everybody this morning I, I I was when we got here there weren't anybody well there was two people three people here and I thought I wonder if everybody's gonna stay home because I think it's 150 degrees in the church building which it's really not that bad so whoever was here and open windows and everything like that thank you for doing that um, it it didn't feel so bad in here and it still doesn't so uh, we'll we'll get started right away before it before it heats up because I'm sure it will as we're going uh, a couple of just announcements. Well, as you, as you all know, you're here at 9 a.m., so here we are, uh, first Sunday at 9, and everybody's on time, and wonderful to see you. Um, if somebody comes in at 9.30 today, don't look at them funny, just welcome them, and remind them after the service that for next week. Um, but none, nonetheless, that we continue to be at 9 a.m. the rest of the summer. Um, but we haven't... I guess we, we the, the offering plate, I was just noticing that we still have it back here, and um, we didn't talk about that with the council, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that may be fine to start passing around again as well, um, but I'm, well, for now it's back at the back of the church, so we won't be doing an offertory or during, um, during the service yet. Uh, just a couple of prayer concerns. Uh, there's none that is added today. Um, but I just direct you to take a look and continue to be praying for each of the people we have listed. Uh, is there any, though, that needs to be added that, that aren't on there this morning? Yes. Oh. Any at all? No. Okay. Um, any other announcements to be added? Yes. Yes, Sarah. Okay. I just have to check something. Um, so, just... This will start being on the bulletins, but I did find out yesterday that we are having VBS here on July 18th through 20th. So I just am flagging that, July 18th through 20th, um, and that'll start going in the bulletins, but I just found that out yesterday. Okay, so VBS here at the church, mm -hmm. July 18th through the 20th. Yes, okay. and Red Willow Bible Camp is going to do it for us again. Oh, great. So, mm -hmm. That's awesome. Okay, Red Willow Bible Camp will be doing uh, Bible school here. They've done it in the past and done a really excellent job. So uh, get the kids and grandkids all scheduled in to come to Bible school here in July, uh, July 18th through the 20th. Uh, let's see here. A couple other. Any other announcements to add here this morning? Anything at all? There'll be a little lunch afterwards if you want to grab and go. That's fine. Oh yeah, what I, I noticed that. So is that is that a uh, uh, is there an occasion? Happy summer. Happy <laughs> summer. Happy birthday. Oh. oh Kathy. Kathy. Well, that's a big announcement. When it's your birthday, then you bring birthday treats. Yeah, I guess. Well, happy birthday. Please, yeah, please stay and uh, wish, wish Kathy a happy birthday after the service and um, the big 5-0, I think. Like <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. Well, um, well, congratulations. Happy birthday. Thank you. Um, actually, it is 72. 72. I've never minded telling my age. That's amazing. If well, God blesses me with the year, I might as well brag about it. Yes. <laughs> well, that's a great, that's so wonderful. Well, in 72 years of life is 72 years of, you know, and, and to be healthy and, and, and strong in those years, it's, it's a blessing. So, way to claim it, and um, happy birthday to you. All right, well, take, yes, take some time, and uh, maybe after the service, right before we're done, we'll sing happy birthday. Any other announcements this morning? Okay. If I think of something in the service like I usually do, I'll, I'll mention it. 
If you would, please stand and we'll begin with the order of confession and forgiveness found on page 56. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins, and forgive us, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess, confess that we are in bondage to sin, sin and, and cannot, cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We, we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, you may be seated for our opening hymn today. It's going to be Seek Ye First. So this is 783 in the hymnal, and uh, the uh, there's a the version we're playing has a has a harmony in the hymnal, but we're gonna sing it as kind of a chorus. So you all know here with me. It's just the all the way of course. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
second again is a period. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. God have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. This is the peace of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the First reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 3. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? 
And the woman said, The serpent tricked me, but I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals, and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Here ends our reading. Our song this morning is Psalm 130, and it's found on page 281 in your green book, and we'll read it responsibly by half verse. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Here is our song. Our second reading this morning is from 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that in accordance with the scripture, I believe and so I speak. We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus, and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. But this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Here ends the reading. And looking at those who sat around him, he said, 
Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of the Lord. to put new batteries in my walk around mic so I'm going to have to stand at the pulpit today unfortunately <laughs> but the title of today I'm going to actually I'm going to look at our psalm it's the, the, the first uh, verse of Psalm 130 is what I want to focus on so I just direct you to that. I want to read that first verse for you. Uh, just in the translation I have uh, used or I have available to me. Psalm 130. Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Now, I'll return to that verse here in, in a moment. Um, the title of my message today is From, from a Third Wheel God to a 3D God. From a Third Wheel God to a 3D God. <laughs> now, have you ever had the experience of being a third wheel? Do you, do you know what I'm talking about when I say that phrase? I mean, I'm sure you've heard the phrase, and, and maybe, maybe, you, maybe you've never had the experience, and, and good for you, if that's the case. But um, being a third wheel is, well, when you're the third child in the family, um, for part of your life, you certainly feel like that's just kind of your place in life, right? You're kind of always taking along. Isn't that right, Rosa? Sometimes Leo and Alice, they've kind of got their life going on, and you're taking along. And that would be called a third wheel. And sometimes, sometimes it doesn't feel good because you don't feel like you're part of the, the main thing going on. You know, it's 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 not it's not a good feeling. Yeah. So Rosa and I can we can relate on that. Uh, uh, I kind of have being a third wheel built into my my job description. I as part of preparing for weddings, I do these premarital counseling sessions, and it's like when we do premarital counseling, it's like the these, they're all excited about the wedding and they're going on this, this date and then you got this pastor sitting over here um, you know kind of trying to play this important role about getting ready for the wedding but they feel, they feel they're ready for the wedding they're ready to go and, and it's just kind of like you're just hanging along and so you have this feeling of being you know on the margins I guess you could say um, that's what I mean by a third wheel in, my, in the title here um and in a moment, I'll describe why I say from a third wheel God to a 3D God. When I read the first verse of Psalm 130, out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord, it makes me go back in the text and in the story of Israel, way to the beginning of this, not the very beginning, but a beginning. And that is following this um, experience or toward the end of the experience Israel had, in Egypt. Now, I've talked often about this sort of background of Israel's story, how they were taken to Egypt and they were made to be slaves. And the text is very clear to describe that this, they had, literally, they call them taskmasters. And they bore down upon the, the people from Israel day in and day out, made them work in a laborious way. It, 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 if you think about the curse described in Genesis from our reading earlier today, it was Pharaoh truly carrying out that curse in a very literal sense for the people of Israel. 
Uh, they were oppressed in, in ways that slaves certainly are oppressed. Uh, but something significant happens toward the end of Exodus. I'm going to turn there. Or I'm sorry, toward, at, the very, at the very beginning of Exodus. Because we know that the big part of the story is that Israel is free from this slavery. But what we don't often catch is the sort of event that occurs, the thing that happens, the pivot, you could say, that causes this big event. And here's where we come to now in the story. Now, we're in the beginning of Exodus. Moses has just been born. Then he is coming of age. He is coming to the point where he's about to meet the burning bush. And we read in Exodus 2, verse 23. It says, Now it came about in the course of those many days that the king of Egypt died, and the sons of Israel sighed because of the bondage that they were in. They sighed. And then they cried out. Simple three words. They cried out. And their cry for help because of their bondage rose up to God. So God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God saw the sons of Israel, and God took notice. Such an interesting thing that happens here in this particular part of the Old Testament. It's this experience that Israel is having for hundreds of years, generation after generation, where they're experiencing slavery, they're experiencing the oppression of Pharaoh, of where they're at, that their experience is one um, of slavery. And you know, Paul goes on in the New Testament to talk about slavery not as simply slavery um, in a way of human to human, but also slavery to fear and slavery to sin. So slavery, as it gets taken up in the Bible, begins to apply to many different things. So we can hear these words not just as a story long ago of people who were under oppression by other human beings but also understanding it as ways in which we as human beings are being oppressed, whether we oppress ourselves, others are doing it, or sin, the brokenness of our world is doing it to us. But nonetheless, we connect with it through here, and it says there's this new turn in the story when they say they cried out. You see, for so long, Egypt and Israel played a two-dimensional role. That reality for Israel, for the people of Israel, was pretty simple. We're slaves. Pharaoh is king. We do what he says. We work day and we work morning to night. We're oppressed. That's our experience. That's our life. It's a pretty flat existence. Right? It's a pretty flat existence, meaning two-dimensional. It's an existence where God has sort of been pushed to the margins, where God has become really a third wheel in the story of Israel. For hundreds of years, generation after generation, they just simply bore the brunt of an evil king of Egypt. They bore the brunt of an oppressor, and they were the oppressed. There were really two storylines. There were really two characters. There were two things going on. How often in our lives do we experience a two-dimensional life with God pushed, pushed to the margin being simply a third wheel? Right? We live in a world that people often call secular. Um, and the word secular means different things to different people. <laughs> uh, but in, in, in terms of the study of secularism and how it 
affects the world in which we live. Uh, one definition that I like is the idea that secularism is a pushing of God to the margins. A view of the world in which God is no longer relevant. Not atheism, not sort of combative atheism where God does not exist and I can prove it for this reason, but just sort of a meh, meh. I don't know, you can do what you want to do. I'll do what I want to do. God's not really, you know, yeah, yeah, God, 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 this, maybe that, but he doesn't really play a role in life. He's kind of a third wheel. That's, that's the more uh, sinister or insidious nature of secularism. Because you don't know it's really happening. How often do we live our lives in that sort of two-dimensional view? Where we have our experience, and then we have the experience of whatever's happening to us in life, whether it be our job, our children's lives, our raising of children, our, you know, retirement experiences, our travels, and things like that, and, and everything just sort of get, gets wrapped up, and yeah, I'm a Christian, yes, I believe, but God kind of becomes irrelevant, unimportant. That's the threat of secularism today, and, and it's interesting to think way back to the story of Israel when they never called it secularism at that point, but in a way, that was also kind of happening. But there comes this point for the people of Israel where they have an epiphany. And they realize again that the world does not consist of just us and Pharaoh. But there is a God who loves us. A God who has made a covenant with us. A God who is in, therefore, in relationship with us. A God to whom we can cry out. Right? And so what happens? It, now it came about in the course of those many days that the king of Egypt died, and the sons of Israel sighed because of the bondage that they had been in, and they cried out, and their cry for help Oh, and their cry for help because of their bondage rose up to God. All of a sudden, this two-dimensional reality rises up into 3D. And we see that it is not a flat existence we live in. That it is not a flat reality of oppression, of oppressor and oppressed, but rather there is a God who intervenes. A God who hears our cries. A God who is willing to listen. That's what the secular world forgets. Is that we can construe of a world where maybe God is unnecessary, where maybe God becomes 3D, but oftentimes it's in our depths, it's in our distress, it's in our depression, it's in our other Ds you can think of. They tend to always be the backwards. That we cry out to God. And we're reminded that God is always there. God is always listening. God has a covenant with his people, which he responds to, which he remembers. The world, again, becomes 3D. And it isn't flat. It's not a secular existence where God is just on the margins, where God is just irrelevant or perhaps not necessary, but rather a world that God is charging with his energy and his dynamism and his presence. A God to whom we can cry out to again and again and experience in our own lives. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you today for uh, this reminder from the psalmist, the reminder that points us back to the story of Israel and reminds us that as we tend to live our lives and tend to get busy with what, whatever we're doing, that we sometimes forget you. 
We forget that you are there, that you are present, that you are desiring to be in relationship with us, desiring to help us in whatever place we are, whatever we are oppressed by. And we thank you for that. We thank you that you are a living God to whom we can cry out and whom hears our cries. We thank you for all this now, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're going to do our hymn of the day today, which is uh, another song I'm going to do on the guitar, and it's called, Lord, I Need You. You have an a insert of it. <clears throat> and... I just thought it was a fitting song to sort of go along with the sermon today. Uh, to remind ourselves that, yes, even though we can be self-sufficient or make ourselves think that we're self-sufficient, there comes a time when we realize we need God. And we need God always. Um, I also want to remind everybody we will be doing communion today. So if you have not, picked, if you didn't grab a communion cup, uh, feel free to get up during the song, walk out, and grab a cup. They're out right on the, um, the table off the front. So, all right.
Okay, at this time I'll have you stand for the Apostles' Creed, found on page 65. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing for the prayers of the Church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God, we come before you today. We worship you and we praise you. We thank you for the gift of life today, the gift of brothers and sisters in Christ that we can worship with, the gift of your presence here in this place. Lord God, we come to you today praying for your whole church. We ask that as your church continues to abide in this world, that it would be always aware of your presence, that this world is a world charged with your grandeur. A world, Lord God, that in which you are always present, always hearing our cries. Lord, we pray you would hear whatever cries of the heart are coming from each, each person here and from the church around the world today. That you would remember us, that you would hear us, that you would act, intervene, be present in our lives wherever we need you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, we pray for the nations today, and we continue to pray for uh, those nations that are still struggling with getting a hold of the, getting a hand, um, the upper hand on the coronavirus pandemic. Lord, we pray for uh, increased vaccine availability, uh, and we pray, Lord God, for strength and healing for those who are sick, for comfort for those who are mourning. Uh, we pray for our own nation. As we have for years, we continue to pray for unity. As we read in the scripture today, Jesus referring to the fact that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Uh, we remember that, and we, we take that seriously. And so we pray that the divisions that exist even in our own country, in the people that live here, that you would bind those differences, bring reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those in need today, we pray for Lavona Wood, Patty Bartle's mother, for continued healing for Jesse Muir, for Nancy Breckner, Helen Seafelt, for Susie Nitsky. Continued healing for Mike Barufka and Corey Nitsky. For strength in his battle against cancer for Jerry Luganitsky. And for Donnie Ellingson. We pray for comfort and for strength and peace for her. Lord, for all of the prayers that, or for all of the needs that are represented here today, but not written down, we also lift to you. We ask that you would meet those needs. And finally, we pray for the agriculture industry, the farmers throughout this, this region, this state, who are struggling with a drought, with blazing hot temperatures. Lord God, we know that you are our provider. And so we ask that you would provide timely rain, we ask that you would provide what we need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For this church, Lord God, we thank you for, uh, again, the presence, your presence here. And the work that you're doing, 
We ask that as we go forth each and every day and each and every week that you would guide us. That this would be a church driven by your spirit, held together by your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Now we would typically do the offering <clears throat> instead. We're going to move into the great Thanksgiving. We found on page 68. The Lord be with you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, to his, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, may it strengthen you and keep you in his grace.
almighty God that you have refreshed us, refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. Uh, ooh, our closing hymn is, I have it marked as a congregational favorite. If anyone has read ahead in the bulletin today and would like to make a suggestion the, for the birthday, that's right. We should. 